worship here at Christ Community on this second Sunday of October. Uh, it is good to be here together as a family of Christ. This is the second weekend of the month, so I encourage you to uh, have your communion elements ready um, uh, so that we can partake in the Lord's Supper together later on in the service. Uh, as is tradition, uh, our special offering, our second offering for for October uh, will be for Abe and Elaine Lee, our missionaries to uh, Mexico. Um, and you can see some information uh, on them in our uh, newsletter that went out this past Friday. Um, also, uh, as this is the second weekend of the month, uh, we will have kids in worship. So, um, because, uh, you know, we have children's ministry and we dismiss them and they go downstairs um, but I am a true believer in the, in the fact that we need to learn how to worship together as a family, all, all ages. Um, so they will be upstairs here, not downstairs, um, so that we can uh, worship together. And if we do hear any squealing or any, uh, you know, my son yelling during the sermon, we'll just take that as an amen. Um, uh, so, uh, so uh, yeah, so just so that we all uh, are on the same page. Now... Um, if you have any prayer requests, please leave a comment in the chat bar if you're worshiping from home or email them to prayer at cccei.org. Uh, it's good to, uh, yeah, it's good to be here together. And hello to Rebecca. Good to see you all the way from New Paltz. Wow. All the way from New Paltz. Um, and uh, just a quick announcement before we start worship for youth group and any young adults who are interested um, we're going to have a quick lunch today. Uh, it's a spontaneous lunch. Uh, so please make sure you uh, talk with my wife um, for uh, your food orders so that we can get that taken care of. And uh, we'll probably be done before one. Um, but we'll eat over at my place, which is uh, all the way over there. All the way over there. Um, uh, second, second, our young adults, uh, our, our young working professionals, we have a life group gathering next week. So please. Uh, mark that in your calendars. This morning's call to worship comes to us from First Chronicles. I encourage you to follow along with the bolded words. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. Join me in prayer. Jesus, we gather in this space. We gather in this place. We thank you for this fellowship. We thank you for our church family. We thank you that scripture teaches us to do whatever we can to gather in spirit and in truth. So Lord, would you restore us to stay? Would you strengthen us to stay? Would you inspire us with your light and love? Would you fill us with your peace so that as we journey onwards, we can be instruments for your kingdom? Holy Spirit, take a hold of us this morning so that we can experience your promises to all the earth. For God is spirit, and all those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. For this we pray in your holy name, and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. I encourage you, I invite you to rise in body and word spirit, and let's greet one another and share God's peace with one another this morning. Let's all sing this together, Light of the World. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me
Let's declare it to the Lord. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely. You're all together worthy. You're all together wonderful to me. of all days, oh, so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created, all for the same became more. Come on, sing it out, church. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to much it costs to see my sins upon that cross. But I'll never know how much it costs to see my sins upon that cross. But I'll never that one last time. Here I am. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely. All together worthy. All together wonderful to Amen. You may be seated. Our God calls us into a time of corporate confession with these words. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. As we look back upon this week, there are moments that we have not repented. If there's moments that we have not experienced forgiveness, I invite us to bring any sins, any burdens to the foot of the cross. Let's go to God.
Hear these words of assurance. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. We've confessed our sins and have been assured of our pardon. I invite us now as one church to confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. And we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, was born of a Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, then was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite us to rise again as we sing, O Splendor of God's Glory Bright. It's an, it's an old hymn from the early church. But maybe unfamiliar for us, but I invite you to follow along with the words. Oh, splendor of God's glory bright, from life's eternal bringing light. Oh, light of light, the fountain spring, oh, day all days illumined. O oh, splendor of God's glory bright From life's eternal bringing light O oh, light of light, the fountain spring O oh, day, all days illuminate Come, very Son of Heaven's love in lasting reading from above and pour the Holy Spirit's ray on all we think or do today. So teach us to love with our mind, drive envy out, remove all spite. To the good each troubling care And give us grace your name to bear All glory be to God most high To God the Son let praises rise Whom with the Spirit we adore Let's sing that one more time. All glory be to God. All glory be to God most high. To God the Son that praises rise. Whom with the Spirit we adore forever and forevermore. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Get myself settled here. And welcome to our worship together. <sighs> it's good to be with the brethren. It really is. Uh, as was mentioned, uh, today is Communion Sunday. Uh, we'll be partaking of the Lord's Supper. Um, so we prepare our hearts to commune and receive uh, a blessing from, from God in that act. 
Next Sunday, uh, October 17th, we are planning to witness uh, the baptism of Gabby and Danny into the Covenant family. So please keep the family and our church in your prayers that we can finally celebrate that uh, together. Uh, Thursday nights from 7 to 7.30, we do have uh, our online, our Zoom prayer group. And immediately following is our Just Show Up for the fall in which we are going to be watching um, parts of the series, The Chosen. If you have not yet seen that series, um, join us. But I definitely most enthusiastically endorse it. Uh, it's a blessing. Every, every episode is a blessing. Um, so if you want to join us for that at 7.30, uh, we discuss the episode as, as we're going through it, and then we have, have a wrap-up at the end. Uh, Bible studies uh, continue to meet, the ladies' Bible study at 10 a.m. on Tuesdays, and men's Bible study will be continuing to meet on Saturdays at 7 a.m. Uh, both Bible studies meet in person in the fellowship hall and are available via Zoom. Also happening next week, next Sunday, uh, is an autism walk, which will be blocking off portions of Main Street, uh, including the library parking lot will be um, not available to us, so please plan accordingly. Please continue to be mindful of the COVID-19 um, policies and um, we have decided to restart the fellowship, the council, as we start uh, to restart the fellowship hour monthly for October, November, and December. If you would like to volunteer, please speak with a council member. And also, just to you know, uh, emphasize that we are participating in Operation Christmas Child. Um, a little bit differently, we're not going to have our big packing party but there is a box by the front door uh, where we will be continue to collect um, school items, care items, toy items, and fun items for the children. Um, so please uh, be generous. And we will, um, a Christmas wrapped box will be available at the church for filling on Sunday, October 31st. Okay, thank you. Are there any prayer requests? Okay, let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we join together to lift these concerns up to you, to open our hearts to you, knowing that you will hear us and that you will grant anything that is asked in Jesus' name and according to your will. Lord, we do lift up all those who are um, 
battling this current disease. Um, our friends, our families have all been affected in some way. So we pray for wisdom and strength for those taking care of taking care of Jonathan, taking care of Frank. Pray for their wives, their families, their children. Lord, we know that you do not give a spirit of fear, but of power and peace. wisdom so we ask an extra measure of your grace on these folks but Lord we also pray for ourselves that we would not give in to fear and anxiety that we would walk in faith and assurance Assurance that you are sovereign, that you are in control of all things. And that it all is working according to your will and your purpose. Lord, we lift up our brother Jervilles, who is looking to make a move closer to work. He's with us all the time, even when he is far away, in his heart, and in his mind, in his thoughts. So we just ask that you bless him with the finances, with the resources that he needs uh, to move, but move according to your plan and according to your timing. We pray for our sister Yvette who continues to pray for us. Pray for our grace and peace to be with us always, and we return that prayer. Lord, we li lift up the leaders that you have placed in uh, positions of responsibility, as we are told to do that we would continue, your people would continue wherever they are to live lives of peace. That we would worship, that we would serve, <coughs> that we would walk out our faith in peace. We pray for wisdom, we pray for salvation for those who don't yet know you. Because we know that if their hearts are turned towards you, that their leadership will also be for your glory. We thank you that you hear us, that you have heard us, that you know each heart and will answer the prayers, the needs of all those unspoken thoughts, all those unspoken concerns. Lord, we just know that you are blessing this time by the power of your Holy Spirit, that when your word is proclaimed, that each of us will receive exactly what we need. So we pray over our brother James as he brings your word to us. Open our hearts, open our ears that we would hear. All these things we ask, we pray, we rejoice that you hear us in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay.
kids. Kids. Do I do I do I need to hold you too? Because oh yeah, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Okay. Oh, you too, you too. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right, church family. Um, the big kids will be staying up here, but the little kids will go downstairs to nursery. But I invite you to uh, raise your hands and, and let's bless our kids once again this weekend. Uh, Jesus, we thank you for. Uh, children of our church, we thank you so much for the laughter and the blessing that they are to us. Father, we lift them into your hands once again because they are your kids, your children, oh Lord. So Father, we pray a special blessing as they continue to learn and grow in your love, in your word. And Father, I pray that you may continue to really just bless them, protect them, guide them, oh Lord, especially in this world that we live in. Lord, we pray for a special measure of your grace and your mercy to abound, O oh Lord. And Father, we pray for uh, the families, the parents that raise these beautiful children. I pray that we as a church family can step up and be the village that they need, O oh Lord, so that we can continue to journey together as a body of Christ. We lift these children up to you. It's in Jesus' name we pray and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Come on, boys. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. So big kids stay up here. Little kids go downstairs. No, not here. You can, unless you want to preach. All right. Go, 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 go. God is good. And all the time. I hope I'm not a prophet right now by saying that my son's going to preach, but we'll see. We'll see. My father did promise a full ride tuition that he would cover his seminary tuition if he, if he does go to seminary. So, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, special shout out to uh, our, our online congregation. I haven't done this in a while. Uh, Lynn, good morning. Uh, Gina, Jer Felice. Islan and Jess, Ruth Choka, uh, good morning to you. Event all the way from South Carolina. Zach Zalewski is watching, so good morning to you. Um, yeah, your mother and father are nodding their heads, good. <laughs> Diane LaBella, good morning to you. Um, and just uh, good morning to the rest of you, whoever I missed, but uh, it's good to be here as we gather here in person and, and for those of you who are worshiping from home or, or at an archive later on, I, I pray that you can let go of any distractions and really focus in and really be united as one spirit. Uh, as many of you know, the 2021 theme has been Proclaim Christ. So I invite you to turn to the person next to you and ask, uh, tell them, Proclaim Christ. What a blessing it is to dive into God's word together as a family of Christ. As we continue with our I Am series, I encourage you to have your Bibles open or your Bible apps because it will be helpful to kind of go back and forth, back and forth. Pastor James, I don't have a Bible. Well, that's why you have your pew Bibles. So um, as we continue on with our I Am series, <clears throat> God's word this morning comes to us from the Gospel of John. John chapter 8, verse 12 through 20. John chapter 8, verse 12 through 20. Scripture is also available in your bulletins as well as the screen in front of you. So if you're there, invite us to rise as we always do at Christ's community so that we can honor God's holy and sacred word. Please follow along as I read this for us. Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So the Pharisees said to him, you are bearing witness about yourself. Your testimony is not true. Jesus answered, even if I do bear witness about myself, my testimony is true. 
For I know where I came from and where I am going, but you do not know where I came from or where I am going. You judge according to the flesh. I judge no one. Yet even if I do judge, my judgment is true. For it is not I alone who judge, but I and the Father who sent me. In your law it is written that the testimony of two people is true. I am the one who bears witness about myself, and the Father who sent me bears witness about me. They said to him, therefore, where is your father? Jesus answered, you know neither me nor my father. If you knew me, you would know my father also. These words he spoke in the treasury as he taught in the temple. But no one arrested him because his hour had not yet come. Amen. You may be seated. Please join me in prayer once again. Jesus, as we open up your word, would you calm our hearts? Would you rid ourselves of any distractions? Would you help us to focus in on you? Speak to us, O oh Lord, in this time. It's in Jesus' name we pray and all God's people say, amen. amen. Uh, so my wife and I oftentimes have, quote, unquote, heated discussions on whether or not we have too many lights on in the home. Sometimes one of us would say, you have to turn off that lamp. We don't need all that light. Sometimes one of us would say, it's not bright enough. We need the light. We, gotta, we, we need the light. And the back and forth, back and forth continues. Either way, we need light. I think back to when Superstorm Sandy hit almost 10 years ago this month. And my family, uh, I used to live... Uh, on the North Shore in NASA County, and we did not have power for about two to three weeks, if I recall. But when it came to finding our necessities, the first thing that we did find were all the flashlights in the house. That's the first thing. You, you, don't, you, don't, you don't look for, uh, do I have all the clothes? Do I have all the, uh, all the toys? Do I have all the gadgets? No, you, the first thing you look for is the flashlights and then the candles. Why? Because we need light. Just like we need light today. Back then, in the early days of the church, they needed light as well. So let's start off with some background this morning. We have what's called the Feast of Tabernacles in the Bible, which for present-day Judaism, they, call it, they often call it Sukkot, or Sukkot, which is a week-long fall festival commemorating the 40-year journey of, Israel, of the Israelites in the wilderness. Now, one of the major uh, features of the feast was the lighting of the giant lamps in, lamps in the women's court or the treasury that you see in the chart that I, I, I have on the screen in front of you, right? So this, the women's court or the treasury, that's where uh, one of the major features of the feast was for the lighting of these giant lamps. To, uh, and as you look carefully, they carry torches around to illuminate the walls and surrounding areas, but it was pretty strategic because it was right in the middle. It wasn't like they were lighting the walls on the north end of the tabernacle or the south or the west. It was smack dab right in the middle, the treasury, that the important, the holiest of holies, right? And so there was this demonstration that the Messiah would be the light to the Gentiles, now, in Scripture, in the New Testament, Jesus attended the Feast of Tabernacles and spoke these words on the last day of the feast. John 7, 37, 38. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the Scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now, Feast of Tabernacle helped point to the truth that Israel's life, Israel's, uh, you know, our lives, it rests on his redemption, which is in Jesus Christ, and his forgiveness of our sins. The light, if you look carefully, it illuminated the temple area, and the people gathered to sing praises and dance for worship. Even in a room, if you, are, if you have a blackout and you need to light a candle somewhere, right? you're not going to leave that lit candle on the side of the room, nine out of ten times, you'll try to find a central location so that it can illuminate the whole room. This light, if you look carefully, reminded the Jewish people of how God was with them and how God was faithful. 
But during this Feast of Tabernacles, when Jesus was there, and the torches, the light was still burning, he said the next morning, John 8, verse, uh, verse 12 in our passage, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. How fitting is this? Right? As the lights continue to illuminate all around the temple, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. This is Jesus fulfilling the Old Testament promises of the coming of the light of salvation and the light of God. Psalm 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Isaiah 9, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. I just love it when you see passages in the Old Testament and the New Testament coming together because that showcases the power of the gospel. It's not just an old encyclopedia or an old history book or Shakespeare or whatever. The Bible is the living word of God. And if you see how the Old Testament promises and the New Testament happenings are coming together, that almost, that pretty much proves to you how powerful our God is. So this conversation on light, it's not new. The, the people have heard it. So if we break this down, Jesus is saying, he is the true light, not just any light. He is the true light. John chapter 1, verse 9, the true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. I love how the Bible has all the answers. Jesus is the true light coming into the world. That means he has purpose because he's saying that the world is filled with darkness. When sin entered the world, Right? The world became filled with deceit, filled with evil and ignorance. The people, the people of the world are still living under the realm of this darkness. So Jesus knew in order to counter that darkness, the true light is needed. Now, this is not just any light, but the only light. Because Jesus testified that if you walk with me, and not, it, it doesn't say if you walk with me or some other people. It says if you walk with me, you will, and if you follow me, not just walking, not just going by the actions, but if you also obey and follow me, you will not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. This doesn't say darkness will be fully eradicated if you are a Christian. This doesn't say Christian life will always be easy paid programming by the Holy Bible. No. This doesn't even say following Christ should be comfortable, so if it's not comfortable, don't follow Christ. No. This is telling us facts and reality. Fact, we are in darkness. Fact, we need the light. We can't have many lights. We need the only light. The only way to salvation the one and only way through Jesus Christ. There's no other way. I'll give you an example. Even present day light bulb wattage. If you don't look at the, the proper wattage of the light bulb, you're going to get in big trouble. Sometimes that specific lamp needs that specific wattage of a light bulb. I'm no electrician, but I've experienced it firsthand. And oh, don't, you know, it's, it's not good, right? But that's exactly what's going on here. We can have so many different things that say, oh, we're the light, we're the light. No, we're the light. But Jesus is saying, no, I am the true light. I am the way. There's no other way. John 14, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Except through me. The one and only true light. So let's change gears here for a second and reflect on this question. What's the purpose of light? What's the purpose of light? Right? To see. Right? Light illuminates in darkness. Right? Light reveals things hidden in darkness. Light leads the way and guides you out of dark situations. Light shows you what is truly there in front of you. But if you don't need the, if you don't feel the need to recognize our need for light, then we're not going to be able to recognize if light is light. 
If you don't know if that's light, then you're not going to want to be in the light. The reason why one can live in darkness of sins or deceit is because they don't know what light is. You see, doubt and uncertainty can be darkness. Sin and temptation can be darkness. Darkness always tries to win. It makes itself captive and seductive. Compla you know, complacency can be darkness. Anything that hinders your priorities on following Christ, anything that hinders you from worshiping together as a body of Christ on the Lord's day can be darkness. Even right here in our passage, we witness the reality of darkness that Jesus encountered when the Pharisees began to challenge Jesus' claim. Verse 13, the Pharisees said to him, you are bearing witness about yourself. Your testimony is not true. The Pharisees are like, oh, okay, so you, you're saying that you're the light. Guess what? Fake news. That's not, uh, you, you can't do your uh, testimony by yourself. They're trying to invalidate his claim. They're trying to devalue his words. They're trying to raise doubt and uncertainty and chaos because in the law, the law required two witnesses to establish a fact in capital offenses. So the law of the present day rejected self-testimony. So they're using that against Jesus by saying, oh you, oh, you can't say that. Everything you're saying is fake news. But then Jesus responds, and the Pharisees and Jesus have this back and forth discourse that we see here from verses 14 through 18 in our passage. Before the Pharisees then ask Jesus, where's your father? Because at a certain point, they knew, all right, we can't get him with the law, law aspect. Let's get him with something else. All right, so where's your father? But Jesus knew that he didn't need to respond. Jesus knew that he didn't need anybody to vouch for him. He responds to the Pharisees with these words, you know neither me nor my father. Because if you knew me, you know my father also. Jesus knew why he came into this earth. He knew his purpose. Jesus knew his identity. He knew his calling. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to this earth right in the middle of all this ugliness to be the light. The light that is still living and active today. Look at verse 20. These words he spoke in the treasury as he taught in the temple. But no one arrested him because his hour had not yet come. If you look at the chart that I showed earlier, right? Where was the treasury he was teaching from? Where was the woman's court? A central location. Where were the lights lit up? A central location. The woman's court, the treasury, right? So in, in, in other words, Right? I'm not saying, let, let's pretend we're architects here for a second, right? If you look at the chart, that location of where Jesus was teaching, the location of where he was sharing and testifying, that's strategic. Because he's saying he's the light, right? And the light was shining there on him to showcase the fact that he is the light. It's strategic. The source and origin of where the light is, strategic. That's where the source and origin of where the light was, in the treachery, in the woman's court. It wasn't anywhere else. Jesus was there instructing the people. And back then, during the law of this time, he should have gotten arrested, but he didn't. Why? Because Jesus was working on God's schedule to accomplish the Father's will. Even for Jesus, the holy tension of light and darkness was on the timetable of the Father's will. You know, many of us in our church family have loved ones within our immediate and extended family that don't know the love of Christ. They don't know the light of Christ, and it hurts. Many of us in our church family have had one too many physical, mental, emotional battles that we have lost count, and it hurts. Many of us struggle with anxiety because of scars and previous hurts. Many of us struggle with worry and concern. Many of us struggle with our relationship with Christ. 
We say we love Jesus, but we end up doing things that clearly don't indicate that love Jesus. Many of us love our country, but seeing the division and turmoil in our country hurts. The list can go on. But scripture is teaching us this morning that Jesus is the light of the world to illuminate this path, to show us how to have a perfect, restored, redeemed relationship with God. If you don't have darkness, how in the world can you figure out if light is light? Sometimes we see what's going on in the world right now, and we get discouraged. Sometimes we go through our battles right now, and we get discouraged. And we're tempted to get complacent and fall away from our relationship with Christ. But it's in those moments that Jesus is trying to teach us that you and I, we need the light. It's in those moments that Jesus is trying to teach us if you're not going to have darkness, you're not going to see how much you need me. I often share this in our Thursday night prayer gatherings. When the list of prayer requests continue to keep going up, that's not a sign of discouragement. That's a sign that Jesus is trying to work on our hearts and our lives that much more. You see, we need to unlearn the worldly way of approaching Christ. And we need to relearn the fact that we need Christ. That's it. We need the light. There will always be struggles. There will always be darkness. But when light comes in, Light overcomes darkness, amen? Light overcomes sin. Light reflects what truth is. I don't know about you, but have you ever tried to be in a room where somebody's trying to have 50% light and 50% darkness in one single room? You're laughing because that's ridiculous. You can't do that. Oh, all right, Jesus, uh, I know uh, you have, you're, you're the light, so I'm going to have 50% of my heart uh, in the light and 50% of my heart, I, I want to go hang out with my friends and do ungodly things. So, um, yeah, okay, we'll do that. 50 and 50. It doesn't work that way. Jesus' light overcomes the darkness. You know, there are so many people who struggle with shame and guilt. And oftentimes when they struggle with shame and guilt, they don't like the light because it reveals all their dirty laundry. It reveals all their dirty spaces. People don't know how to be vulnerable anymore and share their struggles. Well, I've done this before. I've done this before. I've fallen short before. People don't know how to share their struggles because they're afraid of that shame and guilt and they're afraid to be, that, to be in the light, right? Because it reveals that dirty space. But that's more so why we need the light. In order to have the opportunity to clean out that dirty laundry. In order to, uh, to have the opportunity to clean out that dirty space in our hearts and in our lives. We need the light. Church, if you are hearing this message and you're struggling with shame or guilt, the light is not there to scare us. The light is not there to scold us. The light is not there to try to push us in a corner and say, oh, I can't believe you didn't pray to me this week. I can't believe you didn't read the Bible this week. I can't believe you haven't been in church this week. No, the light is there to showcase the truth in how much more we need Jesus. You can never have enough of Jesus. Just like how with this light, you can never have enough light. I was talking with some of our, our, our leaders in the back, talking about how we need more light up here in the sanctuary, uh, in the sanctuary, in the staging area, right? Because some folks worshiping from home said, yeah, we really can't see you in the live stream. We need light. But it looks like we already have light, but we need more light. But that's the thing. We need more light. Doesn't mean we have enough light. When it comes to Jesus, oh, you can never have enough of Jesus. We need more and more of Jesus. 
So my prayer is this, church, as you go about this week and as we get ready to partake in the Lord's Supper this morning, may the light of Christ reveal the truth. But most importantly, may, may it encourage all of us, not just the, with, with the fact that, oh, Jesus is light, but with the fact that we need Jesus that much more. And as you go about this week, if you see that light, if you see the light of Christ, may you be encouraged rather than discouraged that that's right. We need Jesus. Let us pray. Jesus, we need to follow that light. We need to follow the light of Christ. Lord, we confess to you this morning that there's been times where we don't like the light because it, it showcases our, our, our dirtiness, it showcases our fallenness. But Lord, we are reminded through the power of Scripture this morning that it's because of that light that we are reminded how important it is to be under your love and care and in your grace. So Lord, I pray a special blessing over our church family that we can continue to uh, be in the light so that we can embody the light of Christ. We thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray and all God's people say, Amen. 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 The Lord's Supper is a celebration of God's grace. It's not a human achievement. It's a means of grace through which God acts to seal the promises of the gospel. The power of the celebration does not lie in our ability to think hard about the death of Christ and our sin, but in the way that God's Spirit uses the celebration to nourish and sustain us. The Lord's Supper is a gift. I invite you to follow along with the bolded words in this response reading as we approach the table. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts and we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right for us to give thanks and praise. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, show forth among us the presence of your life-giving word. Holy Spirit to sanctify us and your whole church through this sacrament. Grant that all who share the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ may be one in Him. And may we remain faithful in hope and love. And as this grain has been gathered from many fields into one loaf, and these grapes from many hills into one cup, Grant, O oh Lord, that your whole church may soon be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. For just we pray in your holy name and all God's people say, Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread, and afterwards he gave thanks to God. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And that same way he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you, for the forgiveness of your sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes. Church, the Lord has prepared the table for all who love him and trust in him alone for their salvation. All who are truly sorry for their sins, who sincerely believe in the Lord Jesus as their Savior, and who desire to live in obedience to him as Lord, are now invited to come with gladness to the table. Church, the body of Christ, given for you. Church, the blood of Christ shed for you.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the love that brings us food from heaven and gives us the life of your dear son and assures us that we belong to the company of all his faithful people in heaven and on earth. Grant that, strengthened by this fellowship and by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may continue his work in the world until we come to the glory of your eternal kingdom through the same Jesus Christ, the only Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord. For this we pray in your holy name and all God's people say, Amen. I invite us to rise as we respond to God's word and the Lord's table as we sing together the hymn, Be Thou My Vision. seated this time we'll bring our offerings our, our tithes to the lord uh, as always um, online giving is available through venmo uh, through zelle um, uh, offering uh, inform online offering information is available on your bulletins or your digital worship bulletins um, as always you can uh, send a check uh, to the church office um, by using the church address 391 east main street uh, but make sure you, on the memo line you indicate uh, the service date as well. Um, we'll bring our uh, and our special offering for October is for Abe and Elaine Lee, our missionaries to Mexico. Please join me in prayer. Jesus, we thank you for our missionaries uh, near and far. We thank you for Abe and Elaine uh, for the work that they do uh, at the the Texas-Mexico border, uh, for the work that they do in discipling the next generation of ministers all throughout Mexico, for the work that they do um, through global coffee break as Elena is leading uh, your people. Father, I pray that you may uh, continue to bless them, keep them, continue to uh, watch over them, uh, give them health, give them encouragement, Lord. And Lord, uh, especially in the situation where uh, we do have a lot of uh, chaos going on in the southern border, um, and they are strategically there. Lord, I pray that uh, you may help them be the light, help them be the light and salt that you've called them to be, and help them to continue to uh, really minister to those seeking refuge, those seeking asylum, and those that are uh, wanting to just uh, experience your gospel, your grace. So, Father, I pray 
a special uh, blessing upon them, a special anointing over them. And as we give our offerings to you, Lord, as we give our tithes to you, Lord, may we be able to witness uh, the impossible become possible through these offerings, O oh Lord. We thank you. Uh, we praise you. We give you all glory, honor, and praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people say, Amen. 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 Invite us to rise once again in body and spirit as we worship the Lord with the new doxology and end our worship with the benediction. benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ shine upon you. May the love of God, the Father Almighty, illuminate the path in front of you. And may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit remind each and every one of you that we are never alone. That God is for us and not against us. May that bless us now and forevermore and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Amen.